Hello and welcome to today's mini lesson. We're inside the PE portal and today we are looking at information processing. And there's four different areas to information processing that you need to know. And we're gonna go through each one, both the term, which describes each stage, and then what actually goes on at each stage. So we've got four different sections. And it works to think of this like a flow diagram. So every single second, our brain is interacting with the environment through these four different boxes. Not physical boxes in your brain, but four different phases or stages. And then at the end, we actually have a feedback loop going on. Okay, so we start off in our first box over here, which is our input. So our input section of information processing. So what is going on in input? Well, we've got our sense organs picking up information. So sense organs collect info. If we were to put this as a question, this is us working out where we are. What's going on around us? So our sense organs, being it our eyes, our ears, our kinesthesis, our balance, our smell, our taste, whatever it might be, we're working out where we are. We're collecting all the different pieces of information around us, the speeds, the distances, the heights, and we put that into our brain. At which point we enter stage two, whereby we now actually need to make a decision. So in our second phase, we have decision making. Now, when we are making decisions, there's two main things that we need to be thinking about. It's our short-term memory, oh, short-term and long-term. And what we actually do is compare the two. We compare the information that we've just collected in stage one to whether or not we've been here before. So we compare our current situation, current situ, versus our memory, versus where we've been before. Where we've been. So our current situation versus where we've been before. And we're looking for similarities, we're looking for patterns. The information that our sense organs have collected, what problems does that pose to us? So let's take a tennis ball is flying towards you. Well, that's a problem which you need to try and solve. Now, the solution would be to move a hand or, and then grasp the ball at the correct time so that you actually catch it. Now, in the decision-making situation, you are comparing that tennis ball flying towards you with all the other times a tennis ball has flown towards you with similar sort of information. Similar speed, similar height, similar velocity, similar distances, similar spin, whatever it might be. And then once you've done that and you've found an adequate match, you can then select the most appropriate, appropriate response. So you're selecting the solution to the current problem that you've just discovered because your sense organs have been picking up the information. So inputs, decision making, utilizing our short and long term memory, short term being only about seven to 10 seconds, maybe even no, about 30 seconds. And then, sorry, it's 30 seconds, but you can remember about seven to 10 things. So think of it like a phone number. If someone tells you a phone number, you might be able to remember it for 30 seconds, then it starts to get harder and harder, and you might be able to remember seven to 10 of those numbers, but not necessarily the whole thing. Once we've decided what we're going to do then, we enter our third phase, which is our output phase. Output. Now, there's two different parts to output as well. There's what we intend to do versus what we actually do. What's the reality? Because if I see a tennis ball flying towards me, I can picture the perfect catch. But it doesn't mean to say that I can put that perfect catch into reality. 
I can imagine what I want to do, I can have the best intentions, but somewhere between me intending to catch a ball in a certain way and actually contracting my muscles in a certain order to bring that into reality, something goes wrong. So the output is we create our solution in our brain and we send the instructions from our brain through our neurological system, so these electrical impulses via the neurons, to stimulate the correct muscles which then contract. So we're putting our idea into action. This is what we intended versus what actually happens in reality. Now the best performers are those who have very little variation with what they intend to do and what they actually do. They're consistently doing what they want to do. Doesn't mean to say that they are very accomplished. You could have a novice performer who intends to do a basic skill and they can do that very well. But to have an elite performer who can imagine what they want to do and bring this high quality skill into reality consistently, that's high level. That's what people are aiming to be. So, recap. Inputs from our sense organs paints a picture of where we are and what's going on. With this where we are and what's going on, we create a problem in our short-term memory that we then try and solve. How do we solve it? We look for the answers in our long-term memory. Have I solved a problem like this before? If I have, brilliant. What did I do last time? I'm going to do the same thing. If it was very similar, perhaps I can adjust it or adapt it in some way. Then it's the output, the third phase. I then create or try and send out the instructions for what I want to happen, and then I actually get something which happens. My muscles contract, I act, I move in my environment, and things start to change. Which takes us into our fourth box, which is our feedback. So as soon as we have done something, and this could be a split second, a split second of you moving an arm, things have changed, the inputs have changed, the sensory information is slightly different to when it was when you first made your solution, which is why we have two feedback loops. When the feedback comes in, the first thing starts to change, the inputs start to change again, and suddenly we complete this loop again and again and again. So if I watch my arm coming up, but suddenly, because of the spin on the ball, it starts to swerve away, my original solution is no longer adequate. So now, based on this new information, I make a new decision to reach further across to try and catch that ball that's flying towards me. But I've also got this arrow going into this second box, because when all said and done, and the act is complete, and I've either caught the ball, missed the ball, or almost got it but dropped it, once I've got the eventual outcome, the real life outcome, I can then put that into my long-term memory. So I've basically created an ongoing feed loop, or sorry, ongoing feedback, and lasting feedback. So the ongoing feedback is what I was just talking about there. It comes back and it changes every single split second. We run this loop and as we produce an output, we collect the new information that's produced because of it and we go through this same system. But the lasting feedback, once the output is finished, we can then consolidate that and add it into our longer term memory bank. So the next time a tennis ball flies towards us, we can use that recent experience as a possible solution. So with practice, we're essentially building up a, a library of previous attempts, whether they worked or whether they didn't work. Because if they didn't work in that scenario, then we, we can almost eliminate it from doing it again. But then in the future, when something happens and actually what we tried before that didn't work in that scenario, that might actually work in this scenario because the scenario is a little bit different. So whatever happened, whether it's a success or failure, we store it in our long-term memory. So when we make decisions in the future, we're a little bit better informed and we've got a better arsenal 
of solutions to the potential problems. And that is information processing. Four steps, it's the input, the decision making using our short and long term memory. We then produce the output, be it the intended and then the reality. And then we have the feedback, the ongoing feedback that we take in through our sense organs as the situation unfolds. And then our lasting feedback. At the termination of the event, success or failure is evaluated, put in to our long-term memory to help decision-making in the future. And that is that, information processing. So I hope you found it useful, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye for now.